Hey guys, it's Bob Morreale here with The Tuning School, and on today's Tech Tuesday, I'm here with Brian Tooley from Brian Tooley Racing, and we're going to be discussing camshaft and heads in regards to force induction. You don't want to miss it, so stick around for that. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm here today doing an interview with Brian Tooley from uh, Brian Tooley Racing. And uh, we're going to spend some time with him today, and we're going to be discussing camshafts, selection, design, and actually cylinder heads as well in relation to force induction as a part of our force induction series. So, uh, Brian, welcome to the interview. We appreciate you hanging out with us today. Good to be here. Thank you. No problem, man. So, um, I, I, I know that cams are, are a huge part of the selection, and also heads are too. But let me ask you, I mean, you're the expert on cam design and, and obviously heads and on the intake side of things, this is your arena. So, so kind of fill me in here. How important is it really when I'm building a force induction application to really think out the cam design? Well, it really depends on your goals, right? Because if you've got a, uh, you know, a decent blower turbo and you want to make 600 rule horsepower, and you can make that with a stock Z06 camshaft, right? That's true. But then, if, but then if you got a YSI and you want to make a thousand of the tires with a with a LS6, mm -hmm. uh, that camshaft becomes much much more important. That makes sense. So, yeah. how big are your goals? And exactly. could you could you say um, maybe I want to make 600 horsepower and I could get away with a, a ZR1 cam, but <clears throat> maybe I don't want to do it with as much boost. Would I be able to offset that by building it into the cam a little better? Well, you know, when you talk about how much boost, you know, obviously as that cam is smaller, that automatically makes the boost pressure higher mm -hmm. because the cam becomes a restriction. You know, so I don't like using a boost number as, you know, a reference point okay. for making power too much. Right. Because, you know, you can change cylinder heads and gain and lose boost. And sure. There's all kinds of things that affect that boost number. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So um, when you're actually doing the build, the cam design is actually kind of critical depending on those goals. That would basically be your answer. Yes. Okay. And so you could effectively go and offset some of those other parameters, um, such as boost, with a better cam, better heads, and maybe not have the trade-offs of such high heat. Right. From, from having to run more boost through your blower, just trying to make that same power. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, like this is, the centrifugal superchargers camshafts we do, you know, when a guy wants to make a lot of power, uh, we put quite a bit of overlap in it mm -hmm. um, because that will make power. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you lose boost at that same point mm. as you increase that overlap. Sure. You know? So that's why I don't focus on boost numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, I... I get people to say, you know, this is what I've got. This is how much horsepower I want to make. Right. Uh, sometimes that's simple. Sometimes it's impossible. You know. <laughs> I do you know them. Yeah. You have guys with a 72 millimeter turbo, and they think they're going to make 1,100 of the tires in their C6 Corvette. It's not happening. Seven. It's just like, no, you're never going to get there. No, that's not going to happen. Yeah. No, we we know that one very well. Um, <laughs> so, in regards to the overlap and stuff, what kind of what makes an NA cam? Uh, bad and you know I, I think most of the guys watching this are enthusiasts or shop owners and so a lot of like uh, shop owners are gonna get this car in and it's uh, you know probably built for NA already and the guy wants to go forced induction because he's ready for more power what makes that a bad combo to begin with well a lot of NA cams first off they don't have enough exhaust valve open event you know if an exhaust valve open event for an average NA cam may be 50 to 55 degrees, mm -hmm. uh, you know, before bottom bed center. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking EVO over here, right? So yep. 50, 55 number. Uh, a stock LS9 cam is 60. Okay. You know, so when you start talking, let's say, a, you know, supercharged camshaft, you know, we use 60 as our starting point for exhaust valve open. And you would be amazed how many blower cams there are on the market, aftermarket, mm -hmm. you know, blower cams that aren't as much, that aren't as good as a 60 EVO. So they don't have as good an EVO as a stock LS9 camshaft. Wow. Well, while, while we're kind of on the subject here, will you will you go over those events for us so I, people kind of understand what they are? You know, it's funny because everybody puts intake valve open first, then intake valve close, and exhaust valve open and close. I don't do that because when you look at the cycle from the time the spark plug ignites, this is the next thing that happens, right? Ah, exhaust yes. Happens. You have the exhaust cycle. 
the exhaust valve is closed and while the intake valve is opening and then the intake valve finally closes. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's why I put EVO first. Wow, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that makes and perfect sense. I think the other thing we need to touch on is, you know, people are not familiar with looking at these numbers, mm -hmm. but they need to realize that whenever we design a camshaft, we design the camshaft using these four points and then the duration and mode separation intake center line are simply a derivative of choosing these four points. Okay, so this is the route when you're designing a cam. This is the starting point. Right. Wow. Well, that's great. I did not know that. I learned something new today. Um, all right, so let me let me kind of work, work us back into when you're building a cam for a customer with a force induction application. Is it specific to you know centrifugal and then uh, you know positive displacement or turbo? A absolutely, absolutely. And, because and centrifugal uh, supercharged cars almost always make good peak horsepower because it continues to build boost. Mm -hmm. They tend to be laggy in the mid range, so mm -hmm. we actually crutch the cam where it makes better mid range. Uh, torque. Um, so, like, you know, the, the number one way you control torque and horsepower is intake valve close. Okay. So, where a naturally aspirated cam from us uh, may have, you know, for LS1, LS2, uh, may have 45 intake valve close. Mm -hmm. If it's in triple supercharged, we may pull that back to 43. Okay. We're actually pulling that number back, closing the intake, intake valve earlier to help build mid range torque. Mm hmm. To help crush the the missing torque from the centrifugal supercharger. Sure. Now, a positive displacement supercharger is just the opposite. They almost always make great torque. Mm -hmm. They tend to fall off on, on the top end. So we'll be, you know, uh, forty eight to fifty degrees on intake valve close mm -hmm. on the positive displacement supercharged cam. Wow, that's great to know. I had I had no idea it was that critical for those outcomes. It, and it all depends on what your, your goals are, but you know, we all see positive displacement supercharged cams that make a ton of torque, mm -hmm. but they don't make as much horsepower as they do torque. Right. Well, these guys are not going to be happy with that. No, no, if no. Their, if their car makes 800 foot pounds of torque, they want it to make 800 horsepower also. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah, they're trying to get that top end back. Exactly. Yeah, or as a centrifugal guy, maybe the opposite, and he ob obviously needs help getting that thing moving. Yeah. Well, that but, makes sense. And, the other events obviously play into that. Are they? They're not as critical. I take it. You know, it's it's uh, it's interesting what we do because of the you know when you look at naturally aspirated stuff, you know we may have uh, you know upwards of you know fourteen intake valve closed, uh, fourteen intake valve open, twenty eight degrees of overlap on a naturally aspirated cam. Mm -hmm. You know, something we're trying to make a lot of naturally aspirated power with. Mm -hmm. A centrifugal supercharged cam. We may give a couple of degrees of intake overlap mm -hmm. or exhaust overlap, you know, a few degrees of intake overlap, but we generally, you know, keep it in this range. Mm -hmm. The positive displacement, those guys are so conscious of boost pressure a lot of times. Wow. Zero overlap. Like our stage three positive displacement supercharged camshaft. Mm -hmm. Zero overlap. Wow. Yeah. So you're trying to get them back the boost that they're after. Yeah, yeah, they, they don't want to lose a half a pound of boost. Wow, and, okay. And, and the thing will make good power with this type of overlap event, mm -hmm. you know, so you don't have to throw overlap at it. Right, uh, if want to. To, get, yeah. to get to your goal. Because pe people don't realize that we can increase this overlap, mm -hmm. lose boost pressure, and still make more power. Ah, okay. So is a lot of this customer driven? Where Some, some of it's customer driven. Yeah. yeah, that's tough, isn't it? It, it is. It's really tough because, you know, because then we need to get into, uh, like on the naturally aspirated cams, uh, exhaust valve open event, and then exhaust valve lift, and some of the back-to-back -back, uh, engine dyno testing stuff we've done. Sure. Because, you know, we did uh, a few years back, we wanted to test a bunch of naturally aspirated LS3 camshafts. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know some very specific things. One of the specific things I wanted to know was... If we had exhaust valve open events of 56, 60, and 64, what does that affect power? How does that affect power on a dyno? Sure. Right? Because to, to give you the rest of the numbers here, uh, those exhaust durations went from 240 to 244 to 248. Okay. Well, when that, you know, when you only got 
233 intake duration, by the time you get up in this this uh, exhaust duration, you know, people think, well, that's a Bohora can. You know, that's a nitrous can. Sure. Right? And so we tested this back to back to back. And if you ask anybody, well, where does this higher exhaust duration start making more power? Mm -hmm. They'll tell you 5,000, 5,500, 6,000 RPM. Sure. The crossover point was 3,500 RPM. Wow. That's, That's low. where the increased exhaust duration started making more power. Wow. 3,500 RPM. Much lower number than yeah. what most people think. Right. Well, now, here's another thing I'd like to touch on. Lift. Mm. We tested exhaust lift on the same engine. Okay, so we're still talking about, you know, this, uh, we're still talking about this naturally aspirated LS3 engine, and, and I'm sorry to derail your... That's okay. Your, your boost, but this is relevant, yeah. relevant to, you know, the boost cam. So we tested uh, 620 some exhaust lift. We tested 590 some exhaust lift. Guess what? This one made more power. Wow. Right? Yeah. It made more power everywhere with less exhaust lift. Right. It liked duration. It didn't like lift. Right. Right. So what are you going to do with your camshaft? Yeah. Th that. Because this is a win-win. Anytime you can run less exhaust lift, mm -hmm. make more power. You're going to be easier on parts. Yeah. You know, but then people see our, you know, they may see a positive displacement supercharged cam from us. It's 595 exhaust lift. They're like, yeah. well, that's not enough exhaust lift to make power. Right. Because they're an internet expert, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, well, you should really back to back test that on a dyno and get back with me. Right. Exactly. That's, that's a good answer right there. Yeah. I like that. That's a good one. So yeah. when you run into that sort of problem, do you see that's normally a function of cylinder head limitation? Yes. Okay. Yes. So. Absolutely. So, so yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense then. So maybe you have a, a different customer who might have a great set of heads, and then you might go and tweak that a little bit to say, okay, maybe you do need a little more one or the other or, or something here. Yeah, you know, the, there's some interesting things that happen in the solar head dynamically. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to talk about um, valve diameter mm -hmm. to lift ratio. Okay. And, you know, so... Let's say you've got a uh, let's say you've got a, a 202 intake valve, and let's say we think that this 0.3 valve diameter to lift ratio is a is a good uh, a good point, right? So 202 times 3, we're at 606 lift. Okay. okay. Well, so what we found in testing is that this 0.3 valve downward lift ratio, it's kind of point of diminishing returns, quite honestly. Okay. Right? Of course, when you've got a big valve, like in an LS3, you know, you've got a 2165 valve, um, you know, you're going to have to be, you know, we're at 649, 649 lift, right? Now, Brian, Brian, how do you, um, it's really good for How do you get your point three when you start on that thing? What, what, where'd that come from? So this, this, Intake this uh, valve diameter to lift ratio number. Mm -hmm. It's just something that was kind of learned with time. Okay. And I'll tell you a good story. So I had a customer with a, uh, you know, naturally aspirated nitrous engine, uh, trick flow two forty five heads that we did. Of course, it has a, a two point one hundred valve, and he had six thirty lift. Okay. <laughs> which is right at that point three number. Yep. We went from six thirty lift. To 680. Okay. Because yep. how much horsepower the thing picked up on the chassis dyno? <laughs> One. 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 Wow. Yeah. So we, you know, we've determined that this point three is a good number. Well, here's the other interesting thing about this point three number because we do a lot of truck cams, mm -hmm. right? What does a, a 4853 truck cylinder head have for an intake valve? Oh, it's, they're tiny. 189. Yeah, they're tiny. Right? Yeah. So that comes up to 567 lift. Right. So people are trying to shove, you know, all this big lift in those truck engines. Not happening. They're past the point of diminishing returns. And, and that's really what this number is. It's kind of the point of diminishing returns. Wow. Okay. That's a, that is awesome. I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's, cool. I just educated a lot of my competitors. You did. That's crazy. Yes. But the good news is you are an innovator and a lot will continue to move forward with, with your design to keep you guys in you know in a good position because that's that's awesome that's huge that you can get get your ranges set that that well 
because here's the next thing. So when you apply that to the, the exhaust valve, right? Yeah. You say, okay, well, I have a 1 600 exhaust valve. What's that 0. 0.3 yeah. number? Yeah. It's 480. Wow. That exactly. Would, that would freak out a lot of customers. Yes. And you would be amazed how much power an engine will make mm -hmm. with a very low lift exhaust valve in it. Wow. We've yeah. Made, we've made two horsepower cubic inch naturally aspirated with 500 exhaust lift. Wow. Wow. That tells you how critical that is. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, people, and, and it's amazing because I have a very good friend that uh, was, uh, you know, on a winning pro stock team, the summit racing pro stock team for years. Mm -hmm. and, and he did all the camshaft testing, spintron testing. And I asked him, I said, did you ever test running all less exhaust lift? Nope, not one time. And it's just like, ah. wow. You know, I don't know anyone who's ever taken two cams, tested them back to back on an engine dyno with only change in exhaust lift to see what the effects were. Wow, because everybody thinks bigger is better. And if absolutely they yeah. see the only thing, it, yeah camshafts and cylinder heads the only thing better than bigger is make it even bigger <laughs> i love it that's well, not the answer no that's not the answer no wow. and, and that's why these guys you know get uh you know they kind of get their butts kicked and they get freaked out you know because they don't they don't understand what's going on you know they see some of this you know relatively small cylinder heads out there out running them right and they think oh well he must be cheating he must be running nitrous he must be doing all this stuff no nope, not really that stuff just has a better combination. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The combo is built to work well together. Yes. Yeah, and that makes perfect sense. So, as a whole, this entire package has to work together. It doesn't necessarily need the biggest camshaft. It needs the right camshaft for that actual combo build. And that makes perfect sense. It's it's pretty much anything else on the car works the same way. Right. Yeah, I, I, I know exactly what you mean. So, when you're... Um, when you're talking about cams for centrifugal versus positive placement and then you know turbo we'll talk about turbo in a minute um you did you did touch on it a little bit in the beginning as far as you know okay we're kind of a little this side on the positive displacement maybe on the lsa or something um and I assume that's all from learned experience and trying to build in more power in one range or another am i right well it is and it's also you know let's talk let's go back to the overlap um and turbos maybe okay you know, because as we you know a, a turbo uh, camshaft we may close the exhaust valve at zero or we may close it at negative five mm -hmm. and we're closing it really early but the intake you know we may open it at five or ten mm -hmm. so we're actually skewing the overlap events you know to minimize the exhaust overlap but increase the intake overlap, right. which is different from what we're doing with the supercharged stuff. Mm -hmm. The supercharged stuff is more split, the turbo stuff is not. Right. And then the other thing we'd have to talk about is, um, you know, get back to, you know, exhaust valve open point uh, on these things because a supercharged engine, like we said, you know, our baseline starting point is 60, right? Mm -hmm. And we may be 62, 64, 66 mm -hmm. on a supercharged engine. Mm -hmm. Well, on the turbo engine, uh, you know, we may be down here at 54. Right. The earlier you open that exhaust valve on a turbo engine, yep. the more pressure you're basically sending to the turbine. Right. So if you have a limited turbine, mm -hmm. the last thing you want to do is open this exhaust valve early. Right. And, and conversely, if you have a lot of turbine, you can push this number uh, way out. The opposite way. So you can, you can directly impact the spool up characteristics of the turbo absolutely and, yeah. and this is using exhaust valve open and overlap is how we increase spool wow that's and, great and that's a, an interesting thing because you know a, a perfect engine that i like to uh, bring up is actually an engine that i own that um we run in uh jesse coulter's NM, nmca lsx real street car mm -hmm. so that's a class where you run nitrous you know limited blower or 76 millimeter turbo, mm -hmm. right? And um, so that turbo is from Precision. It's a 76 uh, 99 mm -hmm. turbo. So it's T6 flange, big, mm -hmm. um, you know, a big turbine side. Um, we use a, a Trick Flow 245 head. Mm -hmm. We use a 630 lift hydraulic roller camshaft. Last year in the class, the car made the fastest pass in the class 
180 miles per hour. Yeah. No one ran faster with it. no matter how big their head was, no matter how big a solid roller cam they had, mm -hmm. they still didn't outrun this trick flow 245 head with a hydraulic roller cam shift. Right. And I think that's very telling about, you know, this bow down to lift, yep. race to rule, and airflow. And of course, you know, whenever you get ready to get into uh, airflow, right. uh, that's going to be another great uh, conversation as well. Well, we'll we'll divide that one out into the next video because that's <laughs> that's okay. that sounds good to me. I like that, and that'll make for another one. Um, yeah. So, in in terms of your um, your heads, we'll talk on the next video a little bit more about airflow and cylinder heads and how they directly impact uh, cam design and you know performance and selection. But um, I guess the, the last question I have for you on, on this particular talk is going to be in regards to the other items on the car that have an impact on the cam design and selection. So, you know, heads and intake side, obviously, and, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit <clears throat> on, the, on the next one, but uh, maybe um, gears, um, transmission type, um, that sort of thing, maybe yeah, even use. So can, can we talk about that for a little bit? Yeah, because, yeah, you because when somebody calls and they've got a 6.2, you know, they got it in 2,500 pound uh, RX-7, you know, versus a 4,000 pound, right. uh, you know, fifth gen Camaro <laughs> versus a 6,000 pound truck. That's a fifth gen on a, on a diet, so you might want to ratchet that up. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry, fifth gen guy. I'm going to get letters from that one, I can tell you. <laughs> All right, go ahead. You know, so we obviously, you know... 2,500 pounds, you can crutch that can to totally make horsepower. Mm -hmm. Torque is not as important mm -hmm. uh, because it's going to accelerate through that torque point and get into the power point really quickly. Sure. Um, as that vehicle gets heavier and heavier, torque becomes more and more important, right. particularly how it feels when you're driving it. Mm. You know, because if something feels like it's lazy, <laughs> right? Uh, people are not happy. They're not going to be happy. We find the yeah. same thing on the on the chassis dynos actually when we work on a. A chassis dyno that is uh, non-load bearing and then you have one that is load bearing so if we're doing testing on a car that's non-load bearing maybe the roller is only I don't know 1500 pounds that engine can spin up that roller like it's in an RX-7 you right. know like the car is an RX-7 and then you take the same car and you put it on a load bearing dyno that loads it for the car and now yeah. people call and they go well Bob why is my car taking 10 seconds to get through fourth gear pulls and you're like have you gone on the street and tried that yet it's all it's the load it's 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 exactly what you yeah. described same yeah, thing and, and from a guy who who bought a, a dino jet 248 in 2001 mm -hmm. and, and tuned everything from 2500 pound bracket cars sure that ended up being too rich at the track mm -hmm. you know the five to six thousand pound trucks that ended up being too lean at the track sure I'm, you I'm know it. with that uh yeah that process yeah yeah, yeah. I, I know exactly how you feel <laughs> i've been through that the dino jet 248 for a 3,000, 3,500 pound car, perfect. Right. Outside of that, you have problems. Yeah. You got problems. Yeah. 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 We've come a long way from 2001. Things have really improved on the dyno world. Yes. It's a, it's yes. Slope bearing is look. absolutely the way to go. Absolutely the way to go. So, um, okay, so gearing. Uh, you know, you have some guys that, and then, you know, we see it when guys bring cars to the shop for tunes and whatnot, and they, you know, they may have a, a turbo car with 456 gears and it's a street car. And I'm looking at it going, ah, no, no, what are, you, what are you doing here? This is all sorts of backwards. And I'm assuming, and I don't do cam design, but you look at that and go, ah, this is bad also. Yeah, I don't get too hung up on gears, and honestly, don't, don't get too hung up on even converter selection. Okay. Because a guy will come to me, you know, a lot of times they're getting a converter after they get a camshaft, mm -hmm. and I say, okay, well, I'm going to give you a cam that's going to make great average torque, great average horsepower, and then you're going to have to, you know, get the converter to suit. Right. It's really interesting because a cam we do a lot of. We have a, a, a naturally aspirated <laughs> stroker cam, a nitrous cam. It's huge cam, 251, 266 at 50, 35 degrees of overlap. Wow. And, and I had one customer who stood his car on the bumper first time out. Uh, it came down so hard it broke the windshield and half the other stuff <laughs> for the windshield. <laughs> nice. And, and he said, This camshaft is too violent, right? And I'm like, no, your converter's too loose. Yeah. And then another guy calls, same cam, same combination, same everything, you know, and his uh, his car is a herd of turtles off the line. You know, he's running <laughs> 60 foot, you know, and it's just like, and your converter, way too tight. Mm -hmm. You know, so you almost have to, 
build the combination, do the camshaft, and then get the gearing and converter. And a lot of times the, the gearing comes down to what does it take to make it through the quarter mile? Absolutely. You know, you've got a 410 gear in, in a car like this. Mm -hmm. That thing would be at 8,500 RPM. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Yeah, you yeah. have to run a 355 gear right. just to make it through the quarter. Right. And, and you're still turning 8,000 RPM. Right, exactly. I kind of, I really I wish, um, you know, at least from a shop owner's perspective, I had always wished that there was a different perspective that the enthusiasts had when they were trying to build their car. And I looked at it from the back, go, you know, back end going forward saying, you know, look, I want my goal to be a 1099 at 135. And if that's my goal, okay, what gearing do I need to get to that point so I'm not going through, you know, the traps at 8,500 in fourth gear? Maybe I really should just be in third gear and, you know, 6,000 and working their way backwards into the combo. And I think that would probably help with when they come time to buy cams, heads, things like that. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. That, that, that was my experience. And usually, unfortunately, it was the opposite. Uh, last thing we need to talk about uh, is cam selection for turbos. So okay. can we chat for just a minute about that and how that differs and, you know, kind of what, what you would, what you see as common problems? Um, I think the most common problem with turbo cams are guys thinking that an LS6 camshaft is the best turbo cam ever made. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, because it has negative 20 degrees of overlap. Mm -hmm. Well, if you got a big, if you got a tiny turbo, then yeah, that works well. Mm -hmm. If you have a large turbo, you don't have enough overlap to help spool the turbo. Right. You know, so this is the, I guess the most understood thing, and, and this kind of blows people away when we talk about it. They come to me, this is my exact engine combination, all my specs, heads, intake, it's my whole vehicle. I'm thinking about getting one of these three turbos. And I have to tell them, well, come back when you get your turbo selected. Right. Because those three different turbos needs three different camshafts. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've got a street car and you've got a 72 turbo or 76 or an 80, mm -hmm. that is three distinct, distinctly different camshafts. Sure. You know, this one, we're going to have to minimize overlap. We're going to have to pull back the exhaust valve open mm -hmm. so we don't drive up drive pressure too much. By the time you get to this 80, you can start increasing the overlap. You start increasing the exhaust valve open to actually help drive the turbo. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes, that makes perfect sense. Um, is there anything else you want to discuss that we didn't go deep enough in on, on our chart already? Um, no, I don't think so. I think we covered pretty well. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to end up our video this time, guys. Thank you for watching. And then stay tuned for the next one, and we're going to go into uh, more detail with Brian here about cylinder heads and on the, on the intake side of things and how that affects cam design and the overall performance. So uh, thanks for chatting with us today, Brian. Thank you. We'll pick up, We'll pick up again next time. All right, great. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.